Only one person left for this. Only one person can do the job that needs to be done in this very moment. It's with the Hall of Famer, the guy that's done it more than absolutely anybody ever in this show's history. It's been five years of him gracing our stages all around the country. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Memphis Strangler, the Bronx Bomber, the Raleigh Rodeo Riot, the Harlem Globetrotter, Bulgarian Ball Hammer, the Parliament of Portland, the Tijuana Tarantula. This is indeed the one and the only William Montgomery. I'm doing good. There was actually, where I was this past weekend, a woman uh, walked into a walk-in freezer a couple years ago at the hotel and froze to death in the walk-in freezer. And they actually, had, weirdly enough, they had a walk-in freezer experience. While I was at the hotel, it was $1,500. They lock you in the walk-in freezer. I was in there eight hours. It was... Hell yeah, you paid the money for it. 1500 That's right. <laughs> And a little fun fact is William Montgomery is celebrating tonight his five-year anniversary of being a member of the show here on Kiltony. The only current living member of the Kiltony Hall of Fame. It's been five, it's somehow been five years. I remember right when I started doing it, I was thinking I'll be able to make it six months and now it's five years. Red Band and I hate one another more than ever before. I can't even look at his stupid fucking fat ass. You look fat as fuck okay, up in the Okay, all green. right. You be nice to Red Band. He's a sweet boy. How could you ever be mean to Red Band? We don't do that. <laughs> um, okay. You don't look like the stoner idiot that you are. It's interesting. I'm on unemployment right now. <laughs> it's interesting. The yeah. carpet doesn't match the fucking drapes with you or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It does with me. <laughs> oh, shit. Fuck yeah. The fire hydrant. Look out. Hell yeah, dude. Guys, you guys know Genevieve? What'd you think of the minute? Yeah, Genevieve, I loved your set, but that's actually my Nigeria joke. Uh, isn't it uh, obvious that white people named it Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they pronounced it like that. I think they walked up in there and was like, it's a bunch of niggas in here. <laughs> it's a niggery in this bitch. <laughs> hey, everywhere. Oh, I've, sold, I've said that one a bunch. I yeah. think you know that's my joke, so. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little horrified when I heard it come out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Right off the top of your head, as fast as you can, name your top five black friends' names. Go. Uh, Springer. Kevin. Kevin sounds white. Let's Fuck. try again. Um, We've only got Springer so far. Five. We're looking for five black Cam friends. Kind of, oh, no, no, you, no, 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 you're not allowed to use Cam. No, you just met him. You've been up here for seven minutes. Well, you cannot choked, count Cam. Choked, Hold on, you're at one. We have Stringer. Take note that fuck. he sounds black, but cannot oh. name oh, five fuck. black friends, everybody. We're at one. Zero. We are holding strong no, at zero. I just can't think right now. Hold on, hold on. Springer is gone. Cam is my friend. <laughs> yeah, bro, I got no black friends, dude. I guess, dude, I fuck. <laughs> When white people sound black and they're not really, like, really, 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 really from black culture, it's one of the most annoying things for people that were born and raised in all black neighborhoods. Do I sound black? I talk like this. Don't you hate it when white people sound black? Yeah, I wouldn't even imagine being a comedian and talking in a black voice ever. No, Tony, I swear to God, I was on fucking YouTube the other day and... I just typed in my name and I see some fucking video that says William Montgomery doing black voice number six. <laughs> I've been and I have a fucking weird it's a who so whoever's doing that, you better stop. Holy shit. Okay, what do you guys think about Milky? We're gonna get him out of here quickly here. Milky, your diabetes line, even though it got zero laughter, I think was my line of the night thus far. I have been called Milky over 20 years, longer than my government name. Um, people use my government name, it kind of throws me off. 
I used to be called things like uh, Fat Boy, Chubbs, Pillsbury Doughboy. Woohoo! Uh, that's all behind me now because of diabetes. <laughs> because the first part had nothing really to do with it. It was so confusing to me. It made me laugh really hard. So congratulations, Ducky. It Thank was you. so fucking confusing. I did stutter over it. You might want to rewrite that. We want to see type two of that yeah, type I, of joke. I, I, okay. I messed it up. There he goes, everybody. Chase Tucker, stop shaking people's hands. Stop shaking their hands, guys. Ignore them. <laughs> For the love of God. Cam? Cam? Y'all have to stop. You're getting us in trouble. Y'all have to fucking stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> All right. Woo! <laughs> Southwest Airlines is giving free extra seats to fat people who can't fit in a regular seat. If you're so morbidly obese that your fat ass can't fit in a Seagull Airlines seat, you don't need to be getting on an airplane. You need to be getting on a Stairmaster. <laughs> With your fat ass. But seriously, you don't need to be getting on an airplane. I'm sure there's a cheesecake factory within driving distance of your house, fat ass. <laughs> Apparently, Matthew Perry died because he ate too much ketamine. Shit, I ain't ever gonna eat another carrot again. <laughs> Last week in Ukraine, a man walked into a meeting room with 100 people, pulled the pin on three grenades, and rolled them into the crowd, killing everyone. Only person I've seen bomb worse than that is Red Band during his stand-up. <laughs> he killed 100 people, dumbass! That's a bunch! Okay, that's my time, thank you. One minute, 18 seconds. From the great red god. William Montgomery. <laughs> That's what messed up. Honestly, if you're fat, though, don't get on the Stairmaster. That's what destroyed my sciatic nerve. Is that true? Yeah, that's why I had to stop working out. I haven't worked out in probably eight months. I'm starting to get numb in my arm. Who was uh, laughing at that? Yeah, no, it's been eight months. I need to... <laughs> Good job, dumbass. I have to sleep on my stomach at night. If I sleep on my back, which my sciatic nerve is hurting, it uh, gives me sleep paralysis. I have to sleep on my tummy at night. Can you explain to us what happens when a guy like William Montgomery gets sleep paralysis? Oof, it's like, remember the creature from the Black Lagoon? Who could forget that? It looks like the creature from the Black Lagoon. No, I can't even really describe what it is. It's literally just a shadow figure. Oh, great job, dumbass. I'm having the fucking set of my life up here right now, man! Holy shit! What I was just saying was about to really take off, dumbass. That's all your fault. But I think it was the guy on the... Oh, oh okay. They're just some drunk Texas people. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Hootie Who from the get. Absolutely love it. Hootie Who, I was doing a bunch of that in... Uh... In Chicago, I was there this past weekend, and if a joke didn't land, which was, I don't know, 75% of them, it really wasn't a good percentage for me this past weekend, I would just do a hootie who, and everybody would respond, and it really would really help me out moving forward. So, Can you give us an example of one of the jokes that were bombing during your headlining session? So one of them that I thought was going to go well was, uh, so I got high the other day and thought blood was coming out of my ears. It was... <laughs> These people seem to love that. It's not a fully formed joke at all, but uh, your fans love that. That didn't go yeah, well in Chicago? Let me ask no. you this. Could you hear a paper cup fall during your show in uh, Chicago like we heard here tonight? No, I couldn't. I haven't been around people that rude before. I mean, that's so fucking rude. I mean, come on. It's literally my five-year fucking anniversary tonight for being a regular on this show. That is true. So you fucked that up! Five fucking years of this shit, sir, and you fuck it up. How do you feel, sir? Are you okay knowing that you ruined his five-year anniversary of being on the show? Yeah. Actually. Really? Wow. Woo! 
No, 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 no. Don't come over here. What's your name? Carter what? Carter Shankle? Carter Shankle? I don't believe you, but... What time did you start drinking today, Carter? As soon as I got to your show. Right. You want to do a joke, Carter Shankle? What do you think? What, William, what do you think about this? William, I'm going to let you decide, because you're fucking in control right now. It's your time. I'm not a comedian with pre-planned... No, we know you're not a comedian with pre-planned jokes, you fucking joke. Yeah, get your ass up here, Mr. Shankle! Oh, Shank. shit. Oh. Carter Shankle and everybody. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. He took the drunk path. He took the old drunk staircase of the sky right there. You're very red. Carter Shanklin, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I like that. Come on, make some noise for Carter, everybody. All right, Carter, do something. Put the mic right up to your mouth. Look out there and say something funny. Look out there and do it. And I'll act like I'm your arms. <laughs> yeah, hold well, the that, microphone, William. William, wait, 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 already, wait, wait, wait. Right? Let me help you guys or else he's going to have three arms. Let William hold the microphone. Okay. Put your arms behind your back. Okay. Here we go. Okay. All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, make some fucking noise for Carter Shanklin so with William joke. Montgomery Arms for the first time in the history of the show. We're up for an Emmy, by the way. Make sure you. <laughs> Jeez, I didn't even have to say Wait, make sure you wave to today. the people, Carter. Wave to the people. Okay. No, no Carter. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so drunk. Sorry, sorry. This, would, this, would, this is how they should give DUI tests. <laughs> All right, sir. For this next one, I'm going to put my arm. I need you to put your arms behind your back. I'm going to be your arms. How many fingers is he holding up, Carter? Uh, looks like uh, two. <laughs> the question is, where are the other fingers? Whoa. Well, your fingers are on my dick, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh. Wait a second. Where'd that wow. second head come, come from? Back to Wait, go back, me. go back, go back. Yeah. Go back to them, Kino. Do you say something funny to the people, Carter? Well, the guy behind me is the one that's controlling this all. <laughs> Nuh-uh. <laughs> no, he's just your arms, dude. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> the guy behind me is taking over power of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> he's certainly taken over a few things. Oh, Carter, look at you, the natural. Why are you doing that weird thing with your left arm, Carter? Oh, oh, oh well, <laughs> close that, please. Whoa, whoa, all right, this is getting weird. Oh, that feels better. William, do something with your left arm. If you're going to do it, you have to, like, do it. You're not supposed to just oh, leave God. your arms in front. Oh, God. Oh, it's got all sorts Try of stuff Try to react to it. what he's doing with his arms, Carter. I, I, look. well, uh... Jeez, <laughs> hold on a minute. I'm almost there. <laughs> okay, that All was right. a horrible idea. Right? I liked it. No, it was great. <laughs> that was, that was great. very funny. All right. Carter scared the fuck out of me. Oh, yeah. For He's sure. got shit in the basement. He's got... Yeah. He's if a serial you... killer. When Shank is in your last name, you know you have a fucking long line of... Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Is there anything you're passionate about right now in life? Anything new? Anything uh, has you fired up a little bit, perhaps? I wish there was. <laughs> yeah, it's been I've been having a real downer time recently. So I I pray to the Lord above, Tony, that in the coming days I'll be able to cheer about something. But Tony, the past week there's been nothing to cheer about. I mean, everything's falling apart. What about your uh, massive victory in making Carter Shanklin look stupid up here? Do what? Does that fire you up? The fact that you made Carter look a little bit stupid? Yeah, I mean, I actually really loved making Carter Shanklin happy up here. I mean, it was the first time he had ever been on a... I, I loved making Carter Shanklin happy. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. I hated it! Oh, shit. It was a horrible mistake! Wow. <laughs> Are you ever going to stop? I'm doing... never going to stop loving Carter Shanklin. <laughs> All right. That dude needs to keep the fucking Olive Garden jokes in the restaurant, dumbass. What the fuck was he thinking? What do you think the funniest thing you've ever done is in your life? <laughs> in my life? Yeah, in your entire life. I told, I told some people the other day that, that this isn't Olive Garden. If you want something done real fast, you need to go to fuck there. Like, and they posted a Yelp review. Olive Garden. I'm a lot funnier at the restaurant. Yeah, yeah like what have you done at the restaurant? That's like I said, I, those... When you're in the moment and somebody's busting your balls about not, they had to catch a flight and you came into a small hole in the wall restaurant with 10 tables and you're being an asshole. And I'll tell you to what go to Olive Garden. What did they say that was like an asshole thing? 
that we're going to catch a flight and you are taking too long and you only have so many tables. Why aren't you? Why isn't this happening faster? So how long do you think it took after they ordered their entrees for them to get them? Uh, they got the fuck out after right after that because I told them it was going to be about another ten or fifteen minutes, and then they left. And then I told them if they wanted something faster, next time they should go to Olive Garden. Because if they want fast service, you should go to a fast service that's place. That's the funniest thing you've ever done no, in your entire that's, life. that's just recently. <laughs> oh my God. That's just recently. Also, y'all will be happy to know the idiot who couldn't really sing that well who called this show a low-rent American Idol. I literally killed him out uh, in the thing back there. What's up, Austin? It's great to be here on the low-budget version of American Idol for comics. Yeah, dude. Low budget fucking show, huh? <laughs> uh, is stand up something that you really want to do? Uh, it was, for sure. You're, you're saying that after this it's over? You might nah, retire? No, I, of course not. I'm not giving up. Well, I did a lot of improv comedy. You did? Up. Yeah. A lot? Y yeah. One of the great uh, bombing sets of the night, and he's going to bring it all together by spontaneously making a song about Hamas and Santa Claus. This is Hill Tony, American Idol, low-budget edition, live from Austin, Texas. It's a long intro song. I'm thinking St. Nick, he's really slick. But if there's one thing on my Christmas list Is that he'd go meet Hamas And I'd be in bliss Flying with Hamas It'll bomb worse than this set will Israel is ready cause the Christians have won fucking pussy that idiot was. Holy shit. You were nice to him. Oh, and also it has been super tense in the green room. Hans Kim won't even look at I don't know what happened up here tonight. In high school, my dad wouldn't let me watch TV on the weekdays, and I punched a hole in the wall, and I burned up a bunch of papers in the toilet, in the bathroom, in the sink. So that was, that was my... Uh, and then I cut my hand also. I cut little cuts in my hand. You were a little cutter? Yeah, I was just trying it out. You know, when I was a little boy, they, uh, my dad brought me upstairs, and uh, he, he hit my, my, my calf with, like, a stick. Anything else you want to say? You seem like you have fucking something on your mind. Seems like you have unfinished business up here. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You guys must wish Rick Diaz was standing here instead of me, huh? But he's pacing around up there. He's not making eye contact with anybody. <laughs> Last week, an 85-year-old man stabbed his wife to death for messing up his pancakes. So what's the fucking problem with that? <laughs> Stupid old bitch can't be messing up. I can't get pancakes fucked. <laughs> I saw a fat woman described as a plus size influencer, and I couldn't help but wonder what is she influencing people to do? Buy more candy? <laughs> Which couches are best to sleep on? <laughs> it's like, we get it, bitch. You're not moving a lot. <laughs> Okay, that's my time, Tony. Thank you. William Montgomery. Standard setter of the show. Looking fantastic. The red to blue ratio. Everything is unbelievable. You have the head of a fucking star. I've said it a million times. I'll say it again. I know you always do say that, Tony. You are built for comedy. Oh, he's eyeballing the people in the front Yeah, row. oh my God. What is wrong with your fucking bitch's stomach, man? What is going oh, on? Oh, are you? A, my God. Are uh, you a fucking, fucking influencer that I was talking about, bitch? What, wait, what are you saying, William? What are you, what are you saying? The girl's laughing. I don't know what, I'm not seeing. I have a, I have a bad angle stand over Stand up. Can you stand up? What is happening? What is going on? Oh my goodness. Oh, ah! she's. What is that? No, I'm really asking. Why does your stomach look like that? <laughs> a what? A baby? 
She has a baby hidden underneath her shirt. Baby? Hey, do you know where babies come from, William? Have you ever seen a pregnant woman? I always, I always heard they just, the mailman delivers it to your house. And that's what I always believed, Tony, that there was a stork and a mailman. Okay, and- so... <laughs> <laughs> Have you never seen a pregnant woman before? You I don't think absolutely I have, Tony. Shocked. I'm not even kidding. I'm not kidding. This is kidding. incredible. Saudi Arabian guy uh, who we know, he comes to a lot of episodes. Is that your baby in there? It is? You flew your plane into her tower? <laughs> what? <laughs> Little Muhammad. Hell yeah. All right. You gave her your Allah, Allah Akbar or whatever? <laughs> what are you, Muslim as well? Yeah, what, what are, are you? you? Mexican, ah. Uh oh. Uh-oh. William. Oh, look at the daydream happening. He's rock solid statue. I have had the worst day, Tony. I uh, went to an Enterprise car lot at the airport, and again, I had to get that new uh, credit card that only felons can get because I have no, my, no credit history. So I had to get this. And damned if the rental car that I got for the next week um, wasn't like, it was, I swear to God, it was like $23 over my credit card limit. So I had to have a whole two hour nightmare right before this, trying to talk to the Discover people, trying to talk to the Bank of America people. You started your first credit, your first card is a Discover card? (laughs) Yeah, that's what I was, I've, I've, why, what's funny about that, Red Man? That's weird as fuck. That's weird as fuck. Yeah, William. I have a fucking Discover card. You didn't dude. start with like a, a like a cha- like a well, your bank. I couldn't. What is what is your bank? I actually, when I told you all the other day that I didn't have any debt, I actually have a shit ton of debt. In the <laughs> in the fifth grade, I took out all these loans. I had this one friend that was selling a shit to making a shit ton of money on these magazine sales. So I took out like thirty thousand dollars in loans, Tony, in the fifth grade, and I'm still paying that shit back. I mean, with it, it's you, ballooned to three hundred thousand dollars. You took out a thirty thousand dollar loan and then started buying magazines so to try to help out. with to alleviate the debt that I was. I was just I was hemorrhaging money. I mean, it was horrible. I'm buying all these magazines. My mom's getting pissed. I have. A bunch of Mad Magazines. I'm not even allowed to look at Mad Magazines. And my mom's like, William, what are you doing with all these Mad Magazines in your fucking bedroom? You're not even allowed to look at these things. I'm like, Mom, I'm hemorrhaging money right now. I have $30,000 worth of fucking stock of Mad Magazine. Nobody's buying Mad Magazine, Tony. I mean, this is mid-90s. Nobody's looking at Mad Magazine anymore. That's when people were buying it. It was hot. (laughs) Well, I couldn't find the people. Trust me, I was looking. There's only one place to go from here. Ladies and gentlemen. I mean, what can I say about him? You know him. He has the record for all-time appearances on the show. The record for the most interviews on the show. He is the currently the only living member of the Kill Tony Hall of Fame. The record holder for all-time appearances on the show. I present to you... Kill Tony Hall of Famer, the Memphis Strangler, the Vanilla Gorilla, the Milwaukee Maneater, the Syracuse Sultan, the Vanilla Gorilla, the Des Moines Dealer, the Des Moines Dilemma. This is the Big Red Machine. William Montgomery. I think you're crazy. Looking for Old Town Road, must fornicate with Fruity Black Cowboy. (laughs) 
time for a joke. What do you call a robot on drugs? Elon Musk. <laughs> no, but seriously, Alex Jones uses me to block 5G cell phone signals. <laughs> People ask me if I like The Wizard of Oz. Shit, pretty much the only Oz I care about is the HBO show. <laughs> What's the difference between Red Band's mom and the Wicked Witch from the West? Red Band's mom only turns into a puddle when you hit it from the back. Your mom's a fucking slut, dude, and she's old as shit! She was fucking in the Wizard of Oz, bitch! But yeah, that's my time. Thank you so wow, much. Wow, what an amazing performance. This is unbelievable. You are such a showman. On these big shows, you really know how to fucking turn it up. You are, what are, what are you, a robot? It's, Tony, it's a little embarrassing. I was actually wearing this on Christmas night, and I just haven't changed yet. I, uh, super drunk, took a little ecstasy, fucking, five days later, I fucking lost at the airport again. Good evening. Where do you get a hat like that? Oh, man, I got this in New Mexico. I was in New Mexico four days ago, Tony. First night of ecstasy, there's a fucking... Hispanic family that I used to live with. I went over to their casa one night. We're fucking, we're fucking. I mean, it was, uh, <laughs> and I had this fucking hat on. No, but the hat's a nightmare. I've been wearing it for the past five fucking hours. And hey, bitch, when are you going to start laughing at any of this shit? Yeah, I'm killing it up here right now, bitch. William, how much does an outfit like this cost? This was $3,000. <laughs> I got it on Amazon, got 24-hour shipping. It was actually the shipping that cost so much. The shipping was $2,500. Outfit was $500. When you got to get it fast, you got to get it Amazon. I mean, it's a great look. You look like you sell Plan B on the moon. That's a compliment. That's a tough gig. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you got you. it. <laughs> You're crushing it. I love the hat. You said when you got to get it fast, you got to go Amazon. Is this a new sponsor that I'm hearing? It is, y'all. I actually have the biggest sponsorship deal of my fucking life. Hooty who? Amazon reached out Christmas night. That's why I took the ecstasy. Fucking seven years. Fucking, they said $8,000. Something has to be off with that. But yeah, seven years, 8000 bucks. but it's Amazon. I get free shipping, so thanks for, why are you fucking laughing? What are you doing with you your just stupid spent three thousand dollars on shipping? You spent three thousand dollars on shipping. You sound as stupid as ever right now, you dumbass. He did say it was three thousand for the outfit, not for shipping. Well, he said all the money was on shipping. I pay attention. Oh. Got 24-hour shipping. It was actually the shipping that cost so much. The shipping was 2500 Outfit was 500 Oh, yeah, and Red Band. By the way, my dad is up there with uh, your girlfriend, Janice. I saw him making out earlier, bitch. Whoa. <laughs> and my dad's sick as shit right now. Oh, shit. Fin Janice! Finally, a white guy getting an Asian sick for a change. That's different. Yeah, <laughs> You remember the lab leak? No? All right, forget it. Uh, He's talking about Wuhan, and I got a big problem with Wuhan. Tell us what your problem is. I ain't ever gonna go back to Wuhan. How many times have you been there? Shit, like seven times. Oh my God, what did you used to do in Wuhan? I worked at a factory, Tony. It was a factory we dealt with, a bunch of tires. It was a fucking nightmare. I didn't know how to speak fucking Spanish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit no more! One of the balls rolled on top of your hat. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Red Band's mom said the other night. <laughs> oh, shit. And is that just glitter on your belly? Am I seeing this correctly? Because there's a hole in the middle. Is that your belly button? Yeah, I actually ate some of that sparkly stuff in thermometers at my parents' house. I got into some, uh, some of those things and, yeah, drank the sparkly 
silver stuff. And Tony, it's been like this for a couple of days now. My tummy's hurting so bad. I ate a, it's like mercury or something. I was drinking the mercury out of these thermometers. My mom was like, William, you have to stop doing that. What are you, you're turning silver. Yeah, William, what's going on with your tummy? It's turning silver. William, your tummy is really silver right now. And I'm like, mom, get the fuck out of my room, get it! I can eat the mercury, mom! <laughs> <laughs> but that was great. Now, how much money have you made on Cameo? You said six Cameos. I have made over $6,000. Um, it's been two years, so things are looking up. I'm thinking I might actually get that escalator back at the apartment. Uh -oh. I want to start fucking not walking up the stairs anymore. This hat makes it hard enough. I'm getting the escalator again if I keep on doing the cameos. So we'll see. I mean, Lord willing and the creek don't rise. I'm going to get that escalator. Uh, Escalator in two years. It seems like you are set on getting the escalator. Do you think this is some a dream that you're ever going to give up on? You know what, Tony? The moment I heard about a, what, what, just what an escalator was, how it gets you up to the second level of a mall or someplace like that, uh, and you don't have to take a step. I, I discover they're called escalators, and I discover them, and I get one shipped to my house, and I swear to God, I ain't ever going to stop ordering escalators to my house. Never? I ain't ever going to stop. Who do you? <laughs> when I say who do you say who? Who do you? <laughs> okay, let's stop it there. Um, so what I got a structured settlement from J.G. Wentworth. How can you tell? <laughs> but seriously, sorry, I'm late. I just tried to be auditioning to be the next Gold Bond spokesperson. They weren't necessarily holding auditions. It just came to me. I can't explain it. I just realized what Gold Bond needed. The CEO was really surprised to see me. He was like, how did you know my home address? And did you know my security guards are dead? And where's my dog? My dog normally barks. <laughs> Real quick, what if we gave the people of Gaza casinos? Would they... <laughs> Would they accept gambling establishments as sort of a truce? On behalf of Israel, I'd like to present to the people of Gaza the Sandcastle Casino run by Chief Plane on Fire. <laughs> okay, that's my time. Thank you so much. The, great, the powerful, the one, the only, the big red machine, William Lights Out Montgomery. Has How's it going, San Antonio? <laughs> And also, I'm going to be very honest, it's very awkward up here right now. Mr. Beast owes me fucking $100,000, so it was a whole fucking t-shirt deal gone awry, so this was super awkward when I found out yo ass was going to be here, man! <laughs> Will you? I was screaming at all your set. You feel okay? <laughs> Get his ass. Man, what the Get fuck are ass. you talking about? Not in San Antonio, dude! William, you are on fire tonight. You are in rare form. There is something... Oh, yeah, you can say that! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Where did you get this kind of attire, William? Red what you, Band... What, what, Red are you, what, what are you wearing? <laughs> oh, my gosh, no. Red Band actually gave me a $1,000 gift card for anthropology for Christmas, but the one stipulation was I had five minutes to pick out a fucking outfit, so... <laughs> this is what I got. Maybe next year, Red Band, you can give me fucking 10 minutes, you bitch! Speaking of Red Band, I don't hey, know... Hey! Keep my man's name out your fucking mouth! Oh, shit. Oh. Janet, 
Janice, why? You know I can't stand your fucking ass, Janice! Why would you even say that? It's fucking New Year's Eve, bitch! No, seriously, why would you say that, Janice? I'm trying to have fun tonight. Mr. Beast and I had a fun time up here. Why would you fucking do that, Janice? Does Mr. Beast really owe you $100,000? A hundred thousand dollars. It was some T-shirt deal, and tell them about it. It was in Sacramento. It was in some warehouse district. Yeah, in Milwaukee, right? Yeah, Milwaukee. Yeah, that's what happens in Milwaukee stays in Milwaukee. Let me tell you. Don't bring that shit up here. You just got a show. I met you in Milwaukee. You met and me then, in uh, Milwaukee. Yeah, I think. Do you remember? Uh, West Hollywood. Are you starting but did you a guys conversation? Fucking kiss? Oh. Did you guys Speed kiss? Neighbors. Yo. Did you guys Speed kiss? Neighbors. West Hollywood. Whoa. We were neighbors? Yeah, kind of. You worked at the Starbucks by me. And remember that, that You worked at the game? Starbucks? Was, yeah, 2007. You're going, you're it's going deep. It's a venti, not a large. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped a, a big gay queen from trying to beat you up at a, when you were managing that Starbucks. Big gay guy tried to fight you up? Yeah, oh, I, what I happened? I about this in, Hold in on. Milwaukee. What? I told you about this in Milwaukee. I don't know if you remember. You stopped a what? Some guy was trying to beat you up. Big what type of guy? What type Starbucks. of guy? A big gay queen. At, a, at, a, at the Starbucks on, in West Hollywood. Do you remember? We talked about this in Milwaukee, no? I don't remember. Can you yeah. remind me? What did you do? What the fuck is happening? Okay, what did you do in Milwaukee? Man, I'm losing my mind. We're about to find out. I literally don't fucking remember. I, right. No, I'm sorry, Mike Pack. I don't remember talking to you in don't, Milwaukee. Don't let him be mean to you now, dude. He's being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you guys kiss in Milwaukee? Excuse me? Did you and Tony, Big Tony, kiss... In Milwaukee. Big, big <laughs> no, uh, I, was, I was at his show, and I was the only one he, he called out. I was wearing an American flag out hat, and he called me a fag. <laughs> That's right. There you go. And then we hung out a little bit. I think really I nice. said it funnier. And you just say, and then we hung out? Yeah, we hung out the hotel. What are you, what are you talking about? You hung out about? the hotel? Ask, oh. ask Christy and Yoni. Ask Christy it, and Yoni. Explain yeah, to me. There. Oh, you were waiting in the lobby. You were with somebody that yeah. I actually know. Who were you with? Uh, my gay friend, the gay Jew friend. But how do I know? No! How do I know him? Oh, uh, we, well, we met, the, we met, he met you that night. There's a fucking connection, though. There's yeah. a connection here. Yeah, a yeah. And you're not saying A butt it. connection? Oh, no, no. Yes, I'm super gay. Thank you, Shane. Yes, I butt Dang fucked wow. this guy. Hold on, you don't understand why this is hilarious? Yeah, totally. No, I do. Don't be a fucking, uh... I was fucking in the hotel room that night in Milwaukee. You're acting like a real Mike Pack right now. <laughs> we were in the lobby, first of all. That's where I have my gay sex, in the lobby. William, uh, we've been through a fucking lot. You have the most appearances and interviews all time on the show, so I think it's only fitting that uh, you stay up here while we roll... One more little video package. You know, it was at the, uh, he's already a Hall of Famer. But anyway, it was at uh, the ACL Live Theater for the 10 year anniversary where we announced that we were doing this show here tonight. And you guys fucking shocked the world by filling this arena so fast that we had to add another show. And the fan base is fucking through the roof and it's out of control so we'd like to show you where we are going in 2024 here we go roll that beautiful bean footage and also not to be a downer but i have six months left to live there's skin cancer <laughs> again uh so we need you to make it eight months it's august 10th 2024 madison square garden a fucking podcast in madison square garden because of crazy motherfuckers with a demented sense of humor like you people that's nuts william that's what's up so nice to be here today happy new year <laughs> there you go william